Alexander Yaroslavich Nevsky, Russian, semicolon pronounced, Alexander Zlovchken JFSKJJ, listen, Ukrainian, semicolon the 13th of May 1221, the 14th of November 1263, served as Prince of Novgorod, Grand Prince of Kiev and Grand Prince of Vladimir during some of the most difficult times in Kievan Rus history. Commonly regarded as a key figure of medieval Rus, Alexander, the grandson of Sevalod the Big Nest, rose to legendary status on account of his military victories over German and Swedish invaders while agreeing to pay tribute to the powerful Golden Horde. He was proclaimed as a saint of the Russian Orthodox Church by Metropolite Macarius in 1547. 2. Popular polls rank Alexander Nevsky as the greatest Russian hero in history. From tales of the life and courage of the pious and great Prince Alexander found in the Second Scovian Chronicle, circa 1260 to 1280, comes one of the first known references to the great prince. By the will of God, Prince Alexander was born from the charitable, people-loving, and meek the great Prince Yaroslav, and his mother was Theodosia, as it was told by the prophet Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord, I appoint the princes because they are sacred and I direct them. Dot. He was taller than others and his voice reached the people as a trumpet. And his face was like the face of Joseph, whom the Egyptian pharaoh placed as next to the king after him of Egypt. His power was a part of the power of Samson and God gave him the wisdom of Solomon. This prince Alexander, he used to defeat but was never defeated. Born in Perslavl Zelisky. Alexander was the second son of Prince Yaroslav Sevolodovich and Rostislav Mstislavna, daughter of Kyvaneris Prince Mstislav Mstislavich the Bold. Alexander seemed to have no chance of claiming the throne of Vladimir. In 1237, however, the Tatar Mongols came to the Sizdal region, all who bowed their heads, kissed the boots of the Khan, and gave up their citizenship remained alive and well. Those who did not submit were destroyed. Vladimir Princes Yurif Sevolodovich and Yaroslav Sevolodovich submitted to Bata Khan. Thus, the land became part of the Genghisid Golden Horde Empire and its military force merged with the Tatar Mongols military. During the military campaigns of Yurif Sevolodovich, his younger brother Yaroslav was seated as prince. He gave his eight-year-old son Alexander Yaroslavich to Bata into a manat hostages. While staying in the Horde from 1238 to 1252, Alexander learned the whole structure and customs, became blood brother to Batu's son Sartak, wed Bata Khan's daughter, and later became a loyal servant of the Golden Horde as head of the Vladimir Principality, 1252 to 1263. He was summoned by the Novgorodians to become Nyaz, or Prince, of Novgorod and, as their military leader, to defend their northwest lands from Swedish and German invaders. Picture, Moreno, Manor of Baryatinsky. After the Swedish army had landed at the confluence of the rivers Hera and Neva, Alexander and his small army suddenly attacked the Swedes on 15 July 1240 and defeated them. The Neva Battle of 1240 saved Rus from a full-scale invasion from the north. Because of this battle, 19-year-old Alexander was given the Sobruke Nevsky, which means of Neva. This victory, coming just three years after the disastrous Mongol invasion of Rus, strengthened Nevsky's political influence, but at the same time it worsened his relations with the boyars. He would soon have to leave Novgorod because of this conflict. After Skov had been invaded by the Germans and Estonians, the Novgorod authorities sent for Alexander. In spring of 1241 he returned from his exile, gathered an army, and drove out the invaders. Alexander and his men faced the Livonian heavy cavalry led by the Bishop of Dorpaterman, brother of Albert of Buxhevden. Nevsky faced the enemy on the ice of the Lake Peppers and defeated the German knights and Estonian infantry during the Battle of the Ice on 5 April 1242. Alexander's victory was a significant event in the history of the Middle Ages. Foot soldiers of Novgorod had surrounded and defeated an army of knights, mounted on horseback and clad in thick armor. Nevsky's great victory against the Livonian brothers apparently involved only a few knights killed rather than hundreds claimed by the Russian chroniclers.
Decisive medieval and early modern battles were won and lost by smaller margins than are seen in contemporary conflicts. Strategic considerations aside, Alexander's victory was an important milestone in the development of Muscovite Russia. Politician, after the Livonian invasion, Nevsky continued to strengthen Russia's northwest. He sent his envoys to Norway and, as a result, they signed a first peace treaty between Russia and Norway in 1251. Alexander led his army to Finland and successfully routed the Swedes, who had made another attempt to block the Baltic Sea from the Russians in 1256. Nevsky proved to be a cautious and far-sighted politician. He dismissed the Roman Curia's attempts to cause war between Russia and the Golden Horde because he understood the uselessness of such war with the Tatars at a time when they were still a powerful force. Historians seem to be unsure about Alexander's behavior when it came to his relations with Mongols. He may have thought that Catholicism presented a more tangible threat to Russian national identity than paying a tribute to the Khan who had little interest in Russian religion and culture. It is also argued that he intentionally kept Russia as a vassal to the Mongols in order to preserve his own status and counted on the befriended horde in case someone challenged his authority, he forced the citizens of Novgorod to pay tribute. Nevsky tried to strengthen his authority at the expense of the boyars and at the same time suppress any anti-Mongol and anti-Muscovite uprisings in the country. Novgorod Uprising of 1259 According to one interpretation, Alexander's intentions were to protect scattered principalities of what would become Russia from repeated invasions by the Mongol army. He is known to have gone to the Horde himself and achieved success in exempting Russians from fighting beside the Tatar army in its wars with other peoples. Some historians see Alexander's choice of subordination to the Golden Horde and refusal of cooperation with Western countries and church as an important turn to the east for the Russians. Thanks to his friendship with Sartak Khan, Alexander was installed as the Grand Prince of Vladimir, that is, the supreme Russian ruler. In 1252, a decade later, Alexander died in the town of Goroditz on the Volga on his way back from Sarai, the capital of the Golden Horde. Prior to his death, he took monastic vows and was given the religious name of Alexis. From the Second Scovian Chronicle, returning from the Golden Horde, the great Prince Alexander, reached the city of Nizhny in Novgorod, and remained there for several days in good health. But when he reached the city of Goroditz he fell ill. Great Prince Alexander, who was always firm in his faith in God, gave up this worldly kingdom. And then he gave up his soul to God and died in peace on 12 November, 1263, on the day when the Holy Apostle Philip is remembered. At this burial metropolitan Archbishop Cyril said, My children, you should know that the son of the Sosdalian land has set. There will never be another prince like him in the Sosdalian land. And the priests and deacons and monks, the poor and the wealthy, and all the people said, It is our end. Though he died in Goroditz, Alexander was laid to rest in the city of Vladimir, in the great abbey, at the church of the Nativity of the Holy Mother of God. Marriage and Children According to the Novgorod First Chronicle, Alexander married first a daughter of Bryakslav Vazlkovich, Prince of Polatsk and Vitebsk. In 1239, her name is not given in the chronicle. Genealogies name her as Paraskevia or Alexandra, possibly birth and the marital names respectively. They had five children, Vasily Alexandrovich, Prince of Novgorod, c. 1239 to 1271. He was betrothed to Princess Christina of Norway in 1251. The marriage contract was broken. Christina went on to marry Felipe of Castile a son of Ferdinand III of Castile and Elizabeth of Hohenstaufen. Udoxia Alexandrovna married Konstantin Rostislavich, Prince of Smolensk. Dmitri Opraslav L. C. 1250-1294. Andrei of Goroditz, C. 1255, the 27th of July 1304. Daniel of Moscow. 1261 to 4 March slash the 5th of March 1303. He married a second wife named Vasilisa or Vasa shortly before his death. They had no known children. Legacy Some of Alexander's policies on the western border were continued by his grandson-in-law, Dormantas of Skov, 
who was also beatified in the 16th century. In the late 13th century, a chronicle was compiled called The Life of Alexander Nevsky, comma, in which he is depicted as an ideal prince soldier and defender of Russia. Veneration of Alexander Nevsky as a saint began soon after his death. The remains of the prince were uncovered in response to a vision, before the Battle of Kulikovo in the year 1380, and found to be incorrupt. He was glorified, canonized, by the Russian Orthodox Church in 1547. His principal feast day is 23 November. By order of Peter the Great, Nevsky's relics were transported to the Alexander Nevsky Lavra in Street, Petersburg where they remain to this day. A second feast day was instituted on 30 August in commemoration of this event. He is also commemorated in common with other saints of Rostov and Yaroslav on 23 May. On the 21st of May 1725, the Empress Catherine I introduced the Imperial Order of Street Alexander Nevsky as one of the highest decorations in the land. During the Great Patriotic War, on 29 July 1942, the Soviet authorities introduced an order of Alexander Nevsky to revive the memory of Alexander's struggle with the Germans. There was also a Bulgarian order dedicated to Saint Alexander which was founded on 25 December 1881 and then ceased to exist when a People's Republic was declared on 16 September 1946. In 1938, Sergei Eisenstein made one of his most acclaimed films, Alexander Nevsky. On Alexander's victory over the Teutonic Knights. The soundtrack for the film was written by Sergei Prokofiev, who also reworked the score into a concert cantata. Today, the film is renowned for its extraordinary battle on ice sequence, which has served as inspiration for countless other films. In the picture, Nevsky used a number of Russian proverbs, tying Nevsky firmly to Russian. Alexander's proverbial phrase, Paraphrasing Matthew 26 hours 52 minutes, whoever will come to us with a sword, from a sword will perish, has become a slogan of Russian patriots. There is a long tradition of Russian naval vessels bearing Nevsky's name, such as the 19th century propeller frigate Alexander Nevsky and a strategic ballistic missile nuclear submarine recently built for the Russian Navy. Alexander Nevsky's fame has spread beyond the borders of Russia and numerous cathedrals and churches are dedicated to him, including the Patriarchal Cathedral in Sofia, Bulgaria, the Cathedral Church in Tallinn, Estonia. On 24 September 2008, Alexander Nevsky was declared the main hero of Russia's history by popular vote, as reported by the Commerçant newspaper. In December 2008, he was voted the greatest Russian in the name of Russia television poll.